everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I've got a little bit of a cold today, so you're going to have to deal with a bit of a difference in my voice, but I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk to you about the RG353P. I've had it for, I just got it this afternoon actually, but uh, I've been working on it here, and I've got the exact same version of Retro Arena from the RG503 running. I'll give you a quick overview. I don't necessarily need to go too into the gameplay because it's the same as in the 503 videos. So if you want to see how it works, just watch the 503 video. As the build progresses and it's almost ready for release, I'll probably do a much more in-depth video. But for right now, I'm just kind of showcasing what it's got and how it, how it is. Because like I said, it's the same as the 503. I've also put in some time into Android as well, which I also want to show you guys. While we're here though, when you're doing N64 on this device, much like the 503, you want to use uh, standalone. Parallel is only if you need rumble for something. It's not as good as standalone is. As you can see, there's quite a lot of systems for this currently. PSP is kind of a mixed bag. Not every game works good. The same is true on Android as well. You can watch TV shows or movies if you choose. At first boot, much like the 503, you're going to want to come to Options, go to Advanced, and enable SD2 if you're going to be using a second SD card. Got your Wi-Fi connection here. You can mount a USB if you want. You can generate M3U files for multi-disc PS1 games. Get your IP address when you're connected to networks. This is fixed permission script for after you run an over-the-air update, which is also enabled. Bluetooth is enabled as well. And this, this is the update script. So that's where I'm at right now with the Linux build. It's it's close to ready. I still got some stuff that I got to do for the LCD and whatnot. I haven't got touch ready yet. That's probably a, a bit of a ways off because I have to completely switch the version of Emulation Station to be able to do that without a ton of work. It's a ton of work either way, but one is more work than the other. And uh, I still got some work to do on the actual panel for the display on the device. I think maybe a couple of days, two or three days, I'll probably release Retro Arena. But uh, now I'm going to jump over to Android quick. You're going to see a black screen for a moment, and then you'll see Android come up. And we're back. Now, I got some cool stuff to show you guys on Android. I know this device is just launching, so this is something I think a few people are going to be really happy to see. I've added a new section to the website for Tech Toy Tinker Tutorials. And what that'll do is it will explain to you how to set up the Google Android drivers as well as the ADB stuff. And with that, you'll be able to root 
your Android device if you wish to with Magisk. As you can see, I've got Viper here, which is a very powerful audio modification. It gives you a lot of control over bass and clarity and all sorts of different uh, functions or features. You'll also notice in the top right corner my battery icon is different. I got the percent and then I got a, a, a number inside of a circle that shows the rough representation. That's done using gravity box here. To use Gravity Box, you first need to install Magisk, and then you need to install LS Posed module. And then you click on Repositories here, and you type Gravity Box in the search. And just click on the one for Android 11. So it's going to complain here because you technically have root access through um, not only ADB, but on the device you could type SU into terminal. So you you do technically have root access, but it's not the same as Magisk rooted. Oh, also, if you want to use the exposed stuff, you need to enable Zygisk from the Magisk options. It, it's a replacement for Riru. It's, I explained that in a different video too. But basically, it's just um, it's the first boot sector. It injects some code into it that allows different things to run. I'm not really going to show you guys emulation from Android, but what I am going to do is that you need to go to Settings and About and go all the way down to Build. Tap it five times until it says you're in developer mode. Go to System, Advanced, uh, oops, Developer Options. And you're going to want to scroll down and make sure USB debugging is enabled. That's how you access from your computer. That's how you use ADB. That's how you're going to do a lot of the steps required to root this device. So I'm going to add that to the video here. You don't actually need to do any of this stuff on your device after you enable ADB. You can do it all from your computer. And I've added a tutorial to the website, which I will link in this video. I could possibly do a video tutorial on it, but I don't know that it's really that difficult to do. If you read the steps and still have trouble, let me know. But I think it's reasonably straightforward. I tried to take the time to write it out properly. That's pretty much all I wanted to do with this video. We got... Retro Arena, well under development, should be out in the next 2-3 days. We've got the ability to root Android so we can use whatever modules we want, make whatever changes we want, things of that nature. And like I said, that's going to end it for this video. So as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.